Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Authentic Faith Podcast. Welcome to the Authentic Faith Podcast. I am here by myself without my co-host today. (laughs) And my name is Brad Lawson, and I'm here to bring you a really rad conversation with, I guess today it's the bros. The bros. That's what Mariah said. Mariah said it's the bros podcast. And so we're going to jump into it with... Landon McLeod, our worship pastor at Two Trees Church. Say hi, Landon. Hello, hello, hello. And we're going to jump into it with Matt Reby, our music director and audio engineer. And actually, your throne is our new recording studio. <laughs> so, I'm, Matt y- Reby. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm honored. I have a throne. <laughs> You're I throne. feel honored. That's awesome. It's yeah. Fun. So we're going to jump into a conversation today about worship, but we're going to focus in on a few key areas. So welcome. How was your guys' week? Good. We had a long weekend. We had people that aren't local here in Ventura. We had the Wine Walk. We had a booth there. Matt was there at Wine Walk. We had a spring picnic. We- What's Wine Walk? Wine Walk is uh, in downtown Ventura. They have a bunch of vendors out on the streets where uh, they sell stuff and they have wine and vendors and merchandise and businesses. And we gave out waters and electrolytes to all the people walking for free, just blessing them. And it was actually Matt who did it. So yeah, we're really like, proud yeah. of you, Matt. Thank you. It was really you cool. Know, and, and just to start out with something really like spiritual, I felt like God told me over Matt specifically because – you're misunderstood a lot because you are representing a different generation that I think people don't understand from like older eras of church, you know, and I'll say that, but you, you are an evangelist for a new generation and you speak with a different tongue. You present truth in a way that other people can't. And so I just want to say that over you because you honestly did an amazing job, Matt. We're all proud of you. So at this wine walk, just to give you a picture, I mean, thousands of people downtown Ventura all drinking wine and doing what I guess partying, w- partying do what people do just hanging. and uh, yeah. Matt showed up and boldly just presented Jesus kindness and gave people water and electrolytes you said it just like like it was a ministry of kindness um, yeah it's thanks thanks Brad I uh, I feel like maybe to another generation or like a different um like different person, I might be a little bit less palatable. And I think that that's why in specific moments, like I think that for the wine walk, I felt very like pointed being there. I was like, I feel good being here, just meeting people and just telling them that they're important and that they're loved and that they're valued and that they don't have to find their identity in anything other than what's above and where they came from and who they actually are. Like mm. God makes you who you are. He spoke his, he like he breathed his breath into us. Right. Like, so yeah. that's where our essence is, is inside of us. And, um, people a lot, a lot of the time, like I, I had this where I was reaching and grabbing like so much in my childhood and I was reaching and grabbing somebody tell me who I am, you know? Mm. But a lot of it was like when I found who I was, was when I like let go and give it back and just mm-hmm. be like, wow, this is in me. And, I just want to show that to people and I want to see that. And, I, and yeah, there was really, it was a lot less crazy than I thought it was going to be. I was like kind of expecting a little bit more uh, like chaos, but uh, well, you're yeah. going to see more of that when you do surf rodeo for us in July. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I signing up right now? <laughs> you're the evangelist now. Dude, who'd have thought, man? So, so good. good. Um, so yeah, busy weekend, but they did amazing. Then we had spring picnic and spring church picnic, classic church picnic, hot was, dogs galore. That was so fun. 
so fun. Didn't yeah, didn't it feel really good fun. just laying out on the grass as a church and just enjoying life together with no agenda? We had water balloon fights, kid games, all yeah, sorts of good stuff. So so fun. And we did laundry love, which we took over a laundry mat for three hours and paid for the entire community's laundry in the neighborhood behind us uh, as a church on Ventura Avenue, which is a highly dense, um, low-income area of the city. We ended up taking over the laundromat and just praying for and blessing the community as they would come through, and we did all their laundry. So absolutely awesome, and so many people came out. And our adoptive walk team, I heard they cleaned up 22... 22, I want to say 1,000 pounds of trash. Is that wrong? That can't be right. That can't be right. 20, I heard 20, Matt, 20, Matt Stock, no, Matt Stockham, maybe it was 2,200. I don't remember. That could be right. It's it was 22,000. So I don't know. It's on, the, it's it's on their that. Instagram, but there wow. was a cleanup project in the off the avenue on the west side of Ventura where they cleaned up thousands of pounds of trash out of the neighborhood wow. and off the streets and in the alleys and so absolutely weird. awesome. And so That's amazing. So much happening, but um, busy weekend. Yeah, I. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm really ready to get into this discussion with you. Okay, let's so get let's it. get into it because I've got some stuff in my life, but I think we're here to hear from you guys and hear from, uh, you know, break into the conversation. So I had a I had something on my mind for you. Just a question I'm curious about because I want to get into the raw stuff. Coming from maybe a culture where like in church, it's very easy to sing other people's songs and this kind of thing. How has it been for you guys now, good and bad, the vulnerable and the stuff that's coming easy? How has it been for you guys now just with your first step into the realm of songwriting as a worship partnership, like you two as leaders, how has it been and how are you stepping into it? And I, I think it's important to just discuss and break that open because there's a lot of churches and a lot of people who are even creatives who are stepping out and maybe they, you know, they're scared. Maybe it's like, how do I do it? What if my stuff sucks and I put it out in the world and nobody, nobody's vibing to it? What if, uh, how do I even prioritize for that? Because it's easier to do what other people are doing, what works. You know, mm-hmm. How do I even create a culture where this stuff is happening and I'm not forcing it? Um, all those questions, like how do you guys feel in the midst of taking this step to give context before you, I release it to you guys? We're doing some songwriting right now that's happening organically from our worship sets. So our process is very different. We can break into that about our process, but I, I want to focus in on you guys first, but um, you're actually having intentional songwriting sessions with our friend from Isla Vista, Mark Barlow, who we love and we have no problem giving him a plug on this because he's one of the best dudes on earth. Hi Mark. Yeah. We love you. Um, but you guys have been sending time in a room, just developing songs. Hmm. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it scare you? Does it, what's that process like mid we've never released a song. What is that process like for you guys? Yeah, it's a loaded question. Uh, there's a ton there. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there. I think I think one of the things that we started with as a church like a year ago, like what you kind of touched on, was creating the culture uh, of just f- a place there's freedom in where we can actually fail. And what I mean by that is we started doing first Friday worship nights where we would have internal worship with our worship teams and create a, just a place and a time where we could try out stuff and just start singing spontaneous songs. But it came from a place of uh, a healthy culture and a culture going off, going after the same thing together. So that's ooh, where it started. Ooh. Those are two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope everybody heard that. So I just want to say this for people because I want to take what you said. Number one, not being afraid to fail. So trying things, risk-taking. I know Mariah had Mm risk-taking as part of our discussion topic, but risk-taking. And then everybody going after it together. Yeah. That's safe. Yeah, a lot of unity. I think a lot of unity. And so we haven't 
I'm not saying we've tapped into it and we've unlocked the secret to songwriting because we're we're adventuring through the season as a church and a community together. But for us, what has worked uh, was starting with that, the, the culture that we're creating, the worship team, the safety, the family, and the depth together in unity. And so that was about a year ago. And then it's, you know... Well, no, that was like four years ago. Well, yeah, it's been a few years, but specifically about a year ago when we had a worship night that kind of broke out songs and we started to get ideas and melodies and, and, you know, choruses to songs. But then it kind of came to the practical side of, okay, we actually need to write the songs now and finish the songs. And so that's where we've been for the past, you know, period of time now. And it's fun, but it's, it's a choice, I think for me to actually dive into it. You know, it's not easy all the time. Sometimes it's really easy. And sometimes it's like, man, this is work. And this takes time to just fully dive in and give yourself to it. But the last thing I'll say, and I'm sure Matt has a lot, but I feel like for me, it's who you're writing with. You know, like you just mentioned, Mark. Mark is such a kind, creative, Jesus-loving person. So to be in a room with people that have the talent and the heart and the creativity, all those things combined, when you're with the right people, it becomes a lot easier. And so that's what I love about it. But yes, Mm. it has been fun. So, so good. And you talked about where it all broke out with us because, yes, four years ago we started – we decided that we didn't want to have just a song singing worship set. And how do you begin to develop a a worship ministry that really emphasizes just going after Jesus and following the Holy Spirit as he leads you, but then also not being so far ahead of people that they can't follow because it takes time. Like depth, you talk about the depth. Depth doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So yeah. Matt, you stepping into this, like you, like Landon and I had been in it kind of like working on this level, which you always had, I mean, you had the heart for it, but I think coming from mega church, Matt, for those of you guys who don't know, (laughs) was a worship leader for a really, really big church that essentially it was just like time songs and, you know, slow, fast, offering song, Mm -hmm. tithing, offering, whatever, right? Yeah. And coming from that to going into a, a culture where we're saying the importance of this set is for people to encounter God. Yeah. Yeah. How was that transition with you first before we even break into like our side of it? I think what comes to mind specifically like first is there was a lot of unlearning that I had to do. Um, it was, you can get good at anything. You can get good at going through a process of, okay, I'm going to play this song. I'm going to play it as good as I can, and then I'm going to go back and keep playing it. And the repetition, like the more that you go over stuff, you can smooth things out. So when that mindset is in church, you miss the live flowing river Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. You have to, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, like to create structure, um, but I, I'm definitely saying that missing the flowing river of the Holy Spirit is a bad thing. And I think what coming back to a place that like keeps that floodgate open for the Holy Spirit to come in and have its way, um, it, it, it like something that I had gotten good at is, is doing the structure and getting, getting that service like done well and palatable, like I said earlier, like, um, was more important. And so I, I, I had to step away from that and look into like, God, like, what are you actually saying? Holy spirit, where are you moving? And how can we dive into that and not let that just be the frosting on the cake? Did you ever have a temptation to go back? It's safe. It's super safe. So you're like, I know what Mm. to do. I sing a certain song at a certain tempo yeah. and I talk to the crowd this way and they respond. I know how to activate a room. Mm -hmm. See, it's different. Yeah. Like, like, so asking the presence to come and working on activating a room, it's not either or I don't think when you're doing it properly, I think it's both. It's understanding how to invite people in, Yeah. but what happens when they don't enter in with you? Is it scary? Well, what happens when they don't enter in with you, you become a performer, right? Because an and an entertainer, right? And Be, beads and, of sweat start dripping down. You're like, <laughs> guys, sing it one more time. All right. Like, Uh-oh. like, you know, and, 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 and you get a performative 
thing. Like you, you see shows that move you emotionally. Like I've gone to concerts that, that blow me away, leave me at, like feeling one of my favorite artists. His name is Tyson Motzenbacher and he played a show at cafe hotel or hotel cafe. And it was this tiny little show. And I was so moved by this and he's a Christian guy and I love his music and I love his storytelling while he's doing his music. But was he ushering me into the presence of God and leading me in worship? No, but like I was moved and I remember that as a, as a, uh, important moment, you know, mm-hmm. in my life, even watching this show, it was, a, yeah. it was an influential show for me in my life, but people confuse that worshiping in spirit and in truth is not being emotionally moved all the time. They're disconnected. Like, honoring the Lord and honoring God and worshiping Him for sh- for real, like, actually worshiping Him, doesn't follow uh, a structure. And there are things that we put in stone in church where we have time for worship and then time for um, teaching and then time for response. Um, you know, those are important. And I think that But did you, ever, did you ever feel like going back and doing performance was easier? Like it was safer at I, first. Like it, at, at first, I'm talking about the early years. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like when when I got like out of leading worship for like a very structured kind of thing, like um, I was like, "This is what I know how to do," and you could see it all over those early worship. Have you sets. ever? And so, mm-hmm. so sometimes we'll we'll have like a worship set, and we'll have a guest worshiper come into our culture. And Landon and I, Landon can testify to this. Sometimes we'll go we'll look at each other and we'll both see what we see. And they come from a performance culture where mm-hmm. they'll start doing things because it's what a worship leader should do. Yeah. And not that it's wrong. I mean, it's just what they know. I had a, I had a mm-hmm. worship leader voice. Like yes. when I, when I talked, you could hear it. it didn't sound like this. It sounded like, like really passionate and, and you deep. know, and deep and like, I'm saying something important, mm. but it's like when God speaks, it moves past all of those things. When, it, when God says something, it actually is like powerful. Yeah, and when you tapped drops, into something right there, because I personally try not to put on the pastor voice. Yeah. It's too and easy. I, so and easy. I believe we right? talked about this in our origin chat, but the pastor voice <laughs> drives me crazy. Yeah. I mean, it drives me nuts when you hear people put on the voice mm-hmm. and you go, I just can't do it. That's not how you talk to your friends at lunch. Yeah. Like that's not the way the presence of God falls on your coffee appointments, yeah. you know, or your, your at home Bible studies, you greet people at the door, you say, Hey, it's so good to see you. And yeah. you talk to them sincerely. You're not like, da, 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 I've got song one was moved from heaven in this way. Like, you know, it's just a different presentation of what it is you're presenting something authentic yeah and does that make sense yeah the the and the time of unlearning had a lot to do with me saying like like i'm setting this down like i'm putting aside this structure that i've built and found safety in this armor it's like this thing that protects the flesh inside where it's like people can say things about me they can say things about my like authenticity or whatever and i'm just gonna put on this 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 structure uh or like this armor of structure if you will like right like this this covering for the truth thing that's happening in my heart what and and what it's really been this this time like doing worship with our church specifically has been this like unveiling of that armor and setting my flesh on the altar Mm. and like letting it letting that lead the time of worship. Yeah. And, and I don't want to, and I, I need to backtrack on this because I don't want to create shame on anyone. No. Yeah. Everyone has, I mean, we introduce songs, like we talk to the crowd, like that, that happens when you're leading a community of people at any level, mm-hmm. but it's about like turning on the persona, you know, and tr- trying to become something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Landon, you're, you're, what makes you so great as a worship leader and you can talk about it, but I, you're just the same dude everywhere you go. Like mm. you are so good to people. You're just kind. You're very, you're, you're a strong leader, Thank you know, you. you're a strong, strong leader Thanks. and you're always, I mean, you're just easy to work with. 
but at the same time, he's not a pushover. Like Lana will call you out on things. Like he's totally. he, he'll command the room if he has to command the room. He'll he'll like correct a relationship if he has to correct a relationship. Um, but he's also correctable, mm-hmm. so he's teachable. So he's not like full of himself. He's just humble. I don't know. Landon corrects me all the time. Uh, <laughs> he calls me up and he's like, "But it's so in love, dude." Like he calls like, hey, me. Hey man, and he's when like, you hey. did that thing, it really didn't sit right with me. Or not even sit sat right with him. It was like, hey, this. This is the whole like. Well, this is what God was saying in that moment, and like we need to talk about it because it portrayed this. Isn't whatever. that cool like, though when that happens? Yeah, and I and I look to him in at, for leadership like all the time, mm. you know. And and Landon's been like a, a leader. How do you keep from becoming the thing you don't want to be, Landon? <sighs> oh man, humility, I think. Um, but do you make a choice to be humble. Um. I think you make a choice to be patient and kind. Mm. Uh, I think humility is maybe something that you can practice and choose also, but maybe it comes more naturally as you practice it. But I think there's a choice to be kind and patient. And I think there's many moments, even on Sunday mornings or during the week, and maybe it's easier to have it on a Sunday morning or in a church moment, but it's like the moments where you're outside at the bank and someone's taking 20 minutes at the teller and you're just like, oh my goodness. And that's so irrelevant, but it is the same because it's the same principle of patience and stuff. But I think it comes down to just really humbling yourself as a person and as a leader and, you know, even as a lead pastor in your position, Brad, like there's, there's an opportunity to choose to treat people really however you want. And same with me. It's like, I can choose... I have a position and I can choose to abuse it if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, being with you and over the years just learning, just because you have the opportunity to do that, doesn't it's, mean you, do you that. should never. Yeah. And it's almost more responsibility to to carry uh, uh, just that mantle really well. So, well, and people never see that side of leadership from my perspective. Landon sees it a lot. Matt sees some of it. You know, now that you're here more, you're able to see more on the internal side. But controlling your tongue. And Mm -hmm. like controlling your emotions or your frustrations or even like holding back some of the things you would maybe say if you weren't in the position you're in, but because you take the responsibility very seriously, you say, Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray on this one for a week before I say anything about it. I'm going to hold on to this. And that doesn't mean that you're passive. And that's what I fear too, is sometimes by being patient, you become passive. Mm -hmm. And this is not passive. This is patience in the sense that like God, pa- God's patience. Yeah. You're saying it's a fruit of spending time with the Holy spirit. And I know like my flesh wants to respond in this way, in this moment, whatever it may be, whether you're on a stage activating a crowd or maybe you're frustrated because your sound guy didn't show up mm-hmm. or because your guitar player didn't practice or because whatever it may be and learning to say, we're actually here for Jesus. And at the end of the day, like I always pull it back at the end of the day, I don't care if it's just laying in an acoustic guitar or Matt with an acoustic guitar or whatever. At the end of the day, I would rather have that. I'd rather have no worship at all for six weeks mm-hmm. as a church mm-hmm. rather than put the wrong person up. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think, you know what I'm saying? I think my Mariah's style, over there, over there cheering us on. I think my style of leadership too is like, I want to treat everyone with kindness and compassion and grace yeah. uh, and create trust in the relationship. I think we all kind of do that, but, my goal, even out of the church when I had other jobs, is I want to create a relationship that is built on trust and kindness and patience and love and all these things so that when I do need to come in and address something, you know, whether it's someone showing up late, there's that relationship that's been built to where they know my heart. They know who I am so that when I correct, they know, oh, this is in love, this person loves me, and so you've built that relationship. So that's kind of my whole approach is I want to create a relationship where there's trust and love and patience and grace so that when those moments come, they receive it well. How does how does that connect to the Holy Spirit's presence in a song on a wor- in a during a worship set? I think something that kept, was coming to mind was was specifically like people get it, it's easier for people to lose sight and do things that that they would not normally do um, when they look at the big picture when they get so focused on the production of something. And so when you're on the ground with with like making a song great or a worship set even great you you start to like kind of mold things into um something that you wouldn't 
say that you would externally like like if you're outside of the church or whatever you're like we're making it a great awesome environment for people to come in and worship yeah <clears throat> but like if you're treating people poorly it's like then you're definitely not you know you have to practice so that well. it, so is your character directly connected to the anointing I mean, God is God. Does no the, matter who I so am, the, I, don't so so. What, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, but is it does it change the authenticity of the experience for people? It's like a funnel. You know what I mean? Like, if you as a leader are are like kind of funky on the inside, and the Holy Spirit's flowing through you, people are hearing it's language. You know, it's some, it's the way that it comes out of your mouth. You know, if I say something and something, but if it's, in just, me but if it's all interpret, to, interpret me in a weird way, then they're gonna hear me, and I could say something good, but they're not gonna receive from me. Mm. But if it's all language, then we could lie. Yeah, but I think there's something, that and that's what I, I was think, talking about the performance thing. I, I became, but that's really what good I'm saying though, like because what you're know? saying is because I, I I asked the question about the presence of God and breaking out of a performance culture, and you mm -hmm. guys both went into character stuff, and it was interesting for me. Well, because mm. I think I think I think character we've said this a lot keeps you there but calling can get you there so i think that's a lot of where people whether they're pastors or worship leaders you can be faking it and you can have, be an anointed worship leader but not have the character or the holy spirit really indwelling in your you know character or in it's your so heart good. so you can lead people there yeah. but it's counterfeit it's not the real thing so, so let's keep digging so I believe it's an Isaiah scripture that says that he's looking to rest on somebody, but he's looking for the humble. Mm. What does it say Jesus did? He humbled himself. Mm. Yeah. And what happened when he humbled himself? He carried the fullest measure of the presence that's ever been delivered on a human body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, yes, character is connected to the anointing. However, it's not always connected to the anointing because God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Does cool. that make sense? So I'd say the authenticity of the experience that you two specifically bring and then others surrounding our ministry, which many others that will be on this podcast and have been on this podcast will, will represent, the authenticity piece and the honesty and the, the transparency and the humility, that piece of it is directly affecting the experience that people are having in the room because they know they're really loved. Mm -hmm. And it starts with you really loving them. Mm -hmm. well, and then they say, he really loves God. He really loves me. Now I'm safe to experience God. And you asked that question, is it the same when I was talking about communicating and loving and be creating trust with the team? It's the same with the people that are whatever you want to call it, whoever you are, whatever these people are for you, but whether it's the people in the audience or your church members that you've created this relationship and connection with, you're building trust with them. And I think when we first, or when I first came on in, in 2018, it was showing up and building that trust Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. One and piece. Takes, I need you to talk about yeah. working with people that you probably aren't fully connected with. Like people that maybe don't, they're not people that like are really easy to work with. Right. That's part of how you treat them sometimes, I believe, actually is a character assessment on what God can give you when he gives you a whole crew of people that you really vibe with. Does that make sense? So like how you I'm treat all about the, vibes. How you treat <laughs> the difficult people. So in those early days, for a worship group out there, anyone like starting a business, creative, whatever, you get people who at first you're like, I'm so thankful because I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. However, everyone has an opinion and they all are just pushing their opinions on me all the time right now. Uh, how, yeah. do we, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with difficult people when you're starting from nothing? I think difficult is a broad word. It just depends on why they're difficult and how they're difficult. If it's like a heart issue and their heart's not in it and they're just showing up for a performance, I think they need to be cut off the team. They shouldn't be on the stage. That's good. But if if they're difficult in the sense of they have a different personality as you or they ask too many questions or they practice a lot but just can never quite get it, and maybe some people that are listening have had that person on their team, it's like, man, how much longer are we going to do this? Um, I think it's just brave communication and figuring out what the root is and figuring out Maybe they're just not, maybe it's you as the worship leader that needs to be patient and kind, yes. or maybe it's that they should be honest, uh, maybe because a different opportunity. You, your, ch your church or your worship team or your production, like your thing 
is not as important as ministering to a person. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like, sure. so, so let me, let me get into this. Cause then I want you guys to keep going on. Landon, I've seen you treat people so good. Mm-hmm. You're so patient with people. That's real. Like when you talk to, you're holding hands now, Matt and Landon are holding hands. No, <laughs> no, you treat people really well. I've also seen you be pretty harsh on people. And in those times you've like went back and had conversations and apologized or whatever. Like that's part of like creating together and the messiness of relationships and getting started. But part of why God, I believe, is trusting you specifically first. And now you, as you're coming in and our team, as we are now being given more and more is because of the way we deal with people that we say, my ministry with this person and my relationship with this person is way more important than what we're doing. Yeah. Or what everybody, you can do for me. Everybody wants yeah. to be the next Bethel, Upper Room, Hillsong, Elevation. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody wants to do that because why? It's like, it, it looks like they're freaking anointed, right? Yeah. It looks like the presence of God is real strong there. And it looks like, oh my gosh, that must be so amazing to be a part of that and stuff. And people chase that, dude. It's like, people want oh. that more than they want the Holy Spirit sometimes. Yeah. I'm like very passionate about that because like, I wanted that. That's that's what I, I want to say. I wanted that, dude. Like, but and like that was translated not just in worship, but that was every every aspect of my life. Like, I had a music career, career, you know, outside of worship. Like, I chased doing music really fervently and stuff. And I was like, I wanted to do that, but like I realized that I had that same mindset when I was doing worship too. When I would I would idolize like the Brandon Lakes and the, and the Corey Asbury's and like the Chris Browns and stuff. I would look, look at these guys and, and be like, wow, like they're so anointed. Like they're mm. doing that. I got to be like them. It's like, Jesus says, be like me and mm-hmm. do what I do and be my voice and be my, be my hands and feet. And like, that's where the heart of it is. That's where something actually is going to happen. That's unique for the people in your congregation, mm-hmm. for the, for the worship team that you're a part of. And, and like when you tap into that, you're going to do something greater than you could have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why it's better for me to worship in a place where I'm like fully being myself than it is to go somewhere and just play a couple songs that might be on a part of a planning center. So when we first started this conversation, I asked about songwriting Yeah, yeah, yeah. and where we're at and we kind of went through a journey, but now coming back to that, would you rather not write songs than write something that's inauthentically a, an expression of who you are and who God is? Say that again. Would time. you rather just not write songs than fake it and try to push something out because yeah. it's the expectation for worship leaders? Because here's the thing is, like, you've gotten into something. We all want to do it. However, are you willing to put that on the altar and say, unless God does it, we're not going to stress out about it? Dude, I mm-hmm. it like stopped me from moving for a long time because I was like I can't like do something authentically, so I'm just going to sit. And like I think that there was a time a time even in our mini- or a ministry like where we were like we're just going to sit and let God be God for a second. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cuz I'm like I'm uh, at a certain point I'm like God, I I don't want to write something that I'm not honest about, but that's not I don't really be, accurate. I don't want to be stopped from doing things because I can't, you know what I mean? If I was like if I only moved the times that I was a hundred percent that God said something, I'd be still very often. So I'm not very so, sure. So dig, a lot digging of the down time. a little deeper too. So then, like in our process, we're very very new. That's why we started talking about songwriting or whatever. It was just on my heart. Cause that's where you guys are right now. We're investing a good portion of our time, not all of our time into it, but a good portion of our time into exploring the creative space of worship. Hmm. Um. How is it happening for us, like for people? So for us, I would say we are hearing the Holy Spirit drop melodies. Now, what to do with those melodies Mm -hmm. is really hard. For someone who's out there, or people who are out there who are creating, and or maybe they're leaders and they're speaking or whatever, this can work with any kind of public speaking, public any kind of ministry. Any you're putting yourself out there. Any art anything you do that's really hard to, you could either put out something because you're supposed to, or you put out something because you're inspired, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Like for us, I know it happens organically. Tell me about those moments. There's There's a song that we just worked on with Mark where it came out in front of 
200 people plus packed in a little underground place. And it was Albert who came and just said, Hey, I got a melody and like went with it. And then you guys had the safety or, or, or security maybe to explore it. Mm -hmm. Like, and then the whole place is erupting on a song and you're like, Whoa, that just transformed into something. Mm -hmm. Now what do we do with this thing? Like that's our, that's our process. Like, how does that feel like walking through that? And like other people are trying to create, I mean, either you can force it out or you can let it happen. How do you, how do we get here? Because we're writing now and it's coming, but then also you have a temptation to go back and just force structure. Talk about forcing it, where it's come out, how it's come out. And you got five minutes. There are good sides to both coins, to be honest. Like I, the way that I look at it, it's like there's an amazing process of reverence when you sit down and go, God, I'm going to devote four hours to right now. I'm just going to write some honest things out in a prayer to you, and I'm going to put them down, and I'm going to read them back, and then I'm going to sing them in melody, and I'm going to see what, what this is. And um, I think there should be both. Right. Mm. And then something falls out of the sky. Right. Which like we've had a ton else. of those recently and we don't know what to do with them. Yeah. So on the other hand, there's, there's times where you, you are just worshiping and the Holy spirit just shows up and whatever. But I think that those two things, they come hand in hand where it's like my time in devotion will outpour on stage in, in, in worship. Right. Yeah. And if I'm not spending time with God, like, like, often and listening and, and reading scripture and all that stuff, the things that come from my mouth are not going to be of him as often. You know, I'm not saying they won't, but they, but like when you are spending your time away from someone, you're not going to get to know them as much as you would like being with them. You can read things and watch their Instagram story and their feed and whatever, and just see what they're doing. And Oh, that person likes to camp. You know, that person likes to renovate their van, you know, mm -hmm. like, that person is all about finance. You can learn those things, but you can't learn how compassionate they are, right? And so, like, your songs might end up being about something about God and not about something you've experienced from Him. And those things that you've experienced from Him and, and heard from Him and been told personally by Him, um, you will be a lot more authentic about the way um, that you sing about those things. You can tell when, when an artist is like, this is something that's so close to the to my heart. Yeah, I'll speak for myself as a in the audience with you two. When the Holy Spirit drops it, I and I've had both because you've released songs that you've written in the secret place. But then when the Spirit drops it, or when the Spirit's on it, because sometimes the Spirit, because you came out with one several months ago, and you're like, "Hey, I wrote a song. I'm just gonna play it," and we're like, "Cool, do it." You sh you dropped it, and everybody goes. Oh, that was awesome. Like mm -hmm. we were all like Landon. I remember him looking back cause he wasn't on stage that day. He's like, do you hear this? And I said, yeah, spirits on that. So good. But yeah. then there's times like that worship night we're describing mm -hmm. where the Holy spirit actually drops a melody. And when it hits the church, it's almost like it was born for the church. Yeah. It drops in mm -hmm. on fire already. You're just like, whoa. You and know? my fear is like sometimes being vulnerable, like, yeah, we lose that when you go into the structure process. Totally. Uh-huh. It's a it's a dance. You got to dance with it, you know? Like Because you have to dedicate time to it. Yeah. And sometimes I'm worried that if I'm being honest, sometimes we're not devoting enough of that like intentional mind set like do I really really want to see this thing go forward? Mm -hmm. Like so I went like for example, when I get a sermon dropped in my heart, I obsess on it for 5 days. Until I release it. When I release it, then I release it. Does that make sense? It's done. Mm -hmm. But for five days, that's all I could think about. Yeah. That's all I could, I mean, I'm literally not thinking about we anything should, else. And, and I think that our, our Does church Does that make so, sense? Our, our church is so beautiful. I think because it has room for both, it has the freedom for just being like, it's like a carelessness or a, like a freedom kind of thing where we're like, I'm just going to sing some and no, like, and I, no one in our church cares if like, you mess up a little bit or whatever. Like it's a very mm. authentic, like, like place, you know? And, um, anyways, I was going to say, I want to, I want to hear from Landon mm -hmm. too, but yeah. he, he, cause he, you've dropped some crazy stuff in the middle of worship sets and we're like, 
What did he just do? I think mm-hmm. back about the Rosie night. Rosie, yeah. one of our camera operators, um, super sweet girl, but the Holy Spirit just gave you a song. We're sitting here laying hands on Rosie, and all of a sudden Landon just goes, I've got a song. Let me just sing this over yeah. you. And released a song over her, and it was the most beautiful thing. Um, I'm tr- Maybe I'm trying to... Cause there's two, cause I want to hear your thoughts and then we can begin to land the plane. I think I'm, we're mid process and the reality, see a lot of churches wouldn't say this. This is the authentic side. We've done nothing worth listening to really in the realm of songwriting at this point. Amen. Pastor. You know what I'm saying? Like really having the self-awareness to go like, really, we haven't done a whole lot. We know that the Holy Spirit has released some melodies and we don't freaking know what to do with them all. You know what I mean? We don't really know how to develop them all. And we're trying to figure that process out. They just out. float around our worship they sets. They float around our <laughs> worship sets and they're like tags that end up, yeah. they're like, pin the spontaneous spirit-led melody on the donkey. Yeah. You know, they end up everywhere. And like... How though? Because I know they're from God. Part of me, it's like an integrity thing where I go, if I get given something by God, whether it's Landon, mm-hmm. Matt, Mariah, Clover, Matt, any my wife, my kids, God gives me something. It's my responsibility to steward it well. That's what I'm processing, like the yeah. the stewarding process, like because they drop and they're on fire. How do you not lose the fire as you go through the stewarding process? I mean, I don't know. I think. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know. How do we do it? I know that's a lot. I'm just saying. I mean, and we don't have to have an answer on this. This this is the authentic faith podcast, so we don't have to have an answer. I'm just wrestling. How do you do this? And for those out there, it's okay to wrestle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think there's certain songs that I mean, like you said, you have to steward it, get it, practice it, chew on it That's what you're getting at. You're saying it like with your sermon prepping, with songwriting. We need to. We need to. Be on it. I also think that we're going to probably write thousands of songs before we release maybe 10 albums or five out. And so I think people also, for maybe someone listening, is they think like, oh, I'm just going to write an album in a week and it's going to be like the sickest album. I know you're not saying that. I'm just saying for us, sometimes there's hundreds of songs that we chew on and go through until there is an actual finished product. So with that being said, I think stewarding what God's, giving us but also knowing is god on it if god is on it let's maybe it's just finish it the best that we can and then move on finish the next one the best that we can and move on but i what i'm saying is i think it's a practice like i think we have to practice this i think it's a practice of sometimes this, the holy spirit drops something and it's like where did that come from i didn't mm-hmm. even know what that was but then sometimes it's actually a like legitimate practice and then sometimes are you even supposed to develop it sure Maybe there's, it's just for that moment. There's something that I was going to say earlier when we were talking about songwriting too. And like when I mentioned writing worship or, or like, like things falling out or, or doing the process or whatever it was that I said about like singing other people's songs, that kind of stuff. Like we still do other people's songs. Like we 100%, still, yeah. we still do the four song set. Like we do that kind of stuff. But like us as worship leaders, like the way that I look at it is that my job it's almost like a prophet. It's almost like like my job is to give p- the congregation language to worship God, right? Because mm-hmm. there's lyrics in those songs. And when people are worshiping them is like that comes down to me mm. planning songs for people to sing and encounter Holy Spirit. So I'm like, I want to do my best to pick the songs that would best like that, like speak to these people in those moments. So I need to step back and be like, God, like, what are you saying this Sunday? What are you doing this Sunday? And a lot of people do it like where worship leaders will communicate with the pastor. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. That's what people don't realize. We're not, you're not checking all your songs by me or any of that. Yeah. We're praying. And I've intentionally not got into that unless I'm feeling strong. Like, Hey, here's a good one. Cause mm-hmm. I don't do that very often, which is know? sick. I mean, I love when worship leaders communicate with their pastors about those things because then they can be sure to like steward that and be like, we're taking, but you care. know how many times that I haven't said it. And because you guys are walking in the spirit, you guys choose songs that oh, are it probably deeply happens connected. 90% it happened this time. last week. I don't know if you noticed it, but there were, there was one song specifically that got into the power of love. Mm. And we talked about the power of love in the sermon. And I was going, oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit's on this. It confirmed my message before I even walked up and I'd never even told you. But Mm. 
all this to say, we broke it all open. Yeah. Broke it all open. All this to say, yeah. number one, if you're creating anything, it's very, very important that you don't rush it or try to force it. Or if you're in front of people, that you don't try to do something just because you're supposed to do it. It's very, very important that you are an authentic representation of who you are and your identity. Whether or not you believe in God, who you are is very, very important. When you're a Christian, it's one of the pillars of your faith. It's probably one of the most important things, being a son of God, being loved, understanding that all you bring to this relationship is your praise. All you bring to this relationship is your worship. And there's many other things in the Bible, so I want to understand. Like this is specifically in worship, like understanding in the creative space. You're just secure in who you are, and then it's okay not to figure it all out at once. Mm. Like to process with it and release it slowly. Yeah, and building the trust with the church. And when there's people, like city, like we said, you mentioned you know, a little bit ago, when there's people sitting in the audience that are just staring at you how to not be frustrated or like start sweating. There's people this Sunday specifically that were like, felt like right in front of me. And I was just like, what is going on right now? And they just weren't even, they were just staring at me and not even, and it's fine. That's just where they were at. There's nothing, there's there's no shame there. That was just their process. But for me, what I'm saying is it was my decision to say, okay, this isn't me failing. This is just how can I lead the room well? Mm. And how can I say, God, where are you? What are you doing in the room? And there's some people that just worship differently. Some people scream and dance and some people are like broken and just coming undone in the quietness. Mm. And just just being able to trust the Holy Spirit, but also building trust with your congregation and taking it slow and saying, I know this isn't where I want to be, but this is where we are. So how can I take the people on a journey with me not run ahead of them to get to where we want to be so you guys are doing amazing i'm proud of you and we will release a song may take us two years oh it's coming it's coming it's not gonna be two years we had a bro podcast (laughs) there we go hey this is good that's nice Hey, if you're uh, watching this podcast Mwah. with the video form, oh, didn't kiss we have these cool Mwah. new cool new hats, Two Trees Church hats and merch. Is anyone wearing the hoodie? No? No, I was going to put it on, actually. They're super rad, and we're really excited about them. We have some new creative leads that are our friends Let's at the church, the church, and they did an amazing job, Casey, Casey and Brooke. and Brooke, Corbin, um, but, and Sundream. Uh, but we might even have them for sale on the website at some point. Or if not, just come to church on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at the Ventura Majestic Theater. If you're listening, and if April you're listening to this, 12th, in 2022. 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, and if not, we're probably changing the world somewhere else. Yeah. So, so. hey, uh, I gotta go because my daughter has soccer practice. So you almost um, got in trouble earlier. I know. I've got to go. Are you in trouble? Yeah, I've got eight oh, minutes to pick All her right. up and go to soccer practice. So hey, mm. I'm gonna leave too. I want to so. say bye. No, no, I gotta say bye to everybody. All right, bye. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time. See you next time. Bye.